So today I'm going to begin detailing now how I integrated ChatGPT with Unity. And first we're going to start working on setting up our Python environment. Then we will begin creating the ChatGPT web service. And lastly, we're going to be testing the API by using a VS Code REST client, which is going to be very helpful for this video series. So let's jump into my computer and I start working on it. Python dash M and then VEMV, which is very similar in Mac OS as well. So just make sure that you find the right commands. So what I'm going to do, this is going to be the name of the Python environment. I'm going to hit enter and it's going to install the environment using the Python version that I currently have installed, which I believe is 3.8 or 3.9. And you can check that by just basically typing in Python. You're going to see that I do have 3.8.10. So you can do anything greater or equal to 3.7. It's going to work with this video. So let me just go ahead and get out of that. Now what I need to do is, because I'm using Windows, I'm going to activate my, my Python environment. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into my directory here, and then I'll access scripts, and then activate. And if you want to use CMD, you can do CMD. If we're using PowerShell, which in my case is what I'm using, I'm going to do a PS1. And then there's also going to be the actual command for Linux, which I'll put all those commands in the description so you guys see how to do it. And as soon as you do that, you're going to see that now we have this green, basically the name of the environment on the left. And that designates that we have a virtual environment activated. So I'm going to go ahead and copy here a command that we're going to need to run. So it's going to go ahead and copy and paste that. And we're going to be using the chat GPT wrapper. And what that is, is basically just a Python wrapper that somebody else wrote that basically runs a, a headless browser, which means that it doesn't need to run the browser as we're running this is basically runs behind the scenes by communicating with a browser. So once you install it, you're going to see that we have it installed already. You're going to see some of the things that got installed is play, right? Which allows you to, to use a headless browser, which is what we're going to be using green led. And then, you know, different dependencies that we're going to need, including the, you know, the chat GPT component that we are installing. So, the next thing that I want you to do, though, is if you go also to the description, you're going to find these requirements at TXT. And I'm going to link it so you guys have it. And all we need to do is basically going to install all these dependencies. So what I'll do to do that is we're going to do pip install and then dash r. And right now we are in this level. So we need to go back one level. Well, actually, I have it on the same on the same directory. So if you have it in a different directory, you can just go into that. But basically, it's going to be the path of that file that is going to contain all the dependencies that we're going to be using today. There we go. So we should have everything that we need as far as like to run ChatGPT. So now if you do ChatGPT and you hit install, what this is going to do, it's going to configure ChatGPT, the actual wrapper, the Python component, to be able to talk to a browser. So in my case, I am using Firefox, which this is going to you know, allow you to, it'll install it by default when you do ChatGPT install. And you can see that as soon as I did that, it already opened a session. When, if you don't see this at the beginning, you might see basically a, a username and password that you need to enter. Just make sure that you do that because it's going to, you know, it's going to authenticate and save the credentials so that you can communicate with ChatGPT from within this plugin, this component. So we can test the release in here and say, create a mono behavior and then that displays hello world. And you can see, let's see if it knows that we're talking about Unity. Normally I tell it, there we go. It does know that it is Unity, which is pretty cool. So, so we know that this is working by just, you know, actually adding a prompt and asking, asking it to do something. In this case, it just has text. We didn't tell it to log it to the debug, but I think this, you know, this works. So. Once it's done, once you can communicate with it, you can just go ahead and close out of that. And you're going to see here that it says provide a prompt for chat GPT. So we can say, can you, can you calculate to plus, I mean, this is very simple and you might get an error the first time. And that's because the first time that you run it, you need to just close it and, and run it again. And we can tell it to do something more complicated. We can say create a behavior in unity, behavior in unity that displays uh, hello world to the debug log and then hit enter. And if everything is working, if you install it successfully, this is going to, it's not going to launch anything because play right, it basically runs in the background and it's going to authenticate. It's going to, 
you know, saying the prompt and the prompt response should be coming back. And you guys can see that ChatGPT says, here's the example of a mono behavior in Unity and basically has our, our code, which we can copy and paste into Unity, which is really cool. It tells you here what you need to do. We know what we need to do if you're using Unity for a while. So now we can just go ahead and close out of this. We can just do Control Z in Windows to close out. And we know that that part of the code is currently working. So now what we need to do is I want to create a service, right? A service that basically is an API that we can call from within, within Unity. And to do that, I'm going to be using Flask. And that's the reason why I had you install that. So I already have a file in here and you can call this anything you like, but I call it ChatGPT underscore service py. Just make sure that you put it under you know, a folder. In my case, I did service. And once you do that, we're gonna be creating the, the actual service. So if you don't know Python, you can just copy and paste or, or follow along what I'm doing. I'll be making this available in the near future. I might not make it available right now to GitHub until I get it all done, but you can, you can just basically follow along and then get it all set up. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna access a wrapper and then I'm gonna go ahead and import and then chat GPT. This is gonna be the chat wrapper, the, the wrapper that we install as one of the dependencies. So we just basically bring in that package into Python here. And then I'm also going to be using Flask and then I'll just import Flask here. And then I'm also going to be importing requests. And then I also need to import the JSONify and this is gonna allow us to basically be able to handle JSON code into the Flask service that we're building. So, and the reason for that, let me just explain that a little bit, is because we're gonna be sending JSON data from Unity to this service, and then this service is going to basically decode and, and deserialize the JSON and convert it into an object. Okay, so now what we need to do here is I'm gonna say Flask, and we can just say name. So this is just basically how you initialize Flask, and then I'm also going to be creating an instance of ChatGPT. So you say ChatGPT equal ChatGPT, and then we just do our parenthesis here. Just make sure you do that capital letter there. So now what we need to do is we need to do a couple of routes. So I'm gonna do just a simple route to start. So just do the, this route is just gonna be, just make sure that we have, we can communicate to the service. And the endpoint, I'm going to put it under forward slash ChatGPT, and then a status. I normally do this when I'm when I'm dealing with services. I always add a status endpoint just to make sure that it is running. And then you're gonna specify what kind of method we're going to be allowing. So in this case, this is just going to be a get. And then I'll just define the actual method here. Just make sure that I do a status and then column. And then we're gonna be returning JSON. So I'm just gonna say JSONify. I think that's how you say it. And if not, just make sure that you correct me in the comments. But anyway, so you can just do okay. And what this is gonna do is just gonna return the this JSON to the browser. So now what I need to do here is I need to also execute this. So what I need to do is I'm gonna say if name and then equal equal, and I'm gonna say, make sure that we, this equal equal main, so I'm just gonna say main, equal equal, and then column. And we're gonna say that app that run, and we're gonna be running basically this Flask application. And I'm gonna say thread it equal false because right now, even though we're building an API, the ChatGPT team does not provide an API for us. So I wanna make sure that our call is executed and then return. If you do a thread it, we're gonna be you know, doing multiple calls. And, and right now the API for ChatGPT is not available. Once they make it available, we can just you basically just remove that parameter and then have the service be some sort of a gateway that we can we can access. So once you do that, we need to create another endpoint, but I wanna run it just to make sure that this is working. And if you wanna run it, all you need to do is just Python and then we can just give it the name of the file. In our case, it's gonna be ChatGPT service. And if everything works, we should see these and technically you could open up a browser window and go to that and then make sure that you go to that endpoint. So we're gonna do that. Let's go ahead and right click in here, open up a browser window and then I'll just go ahead and execute that and we can just do that. And then remember it's ChatGPT status and we did get the message. Okay, so that means our service is currently working. Okay, so now let's do, let's do the real thing. Now we know that the Python service is, is working and I'm gonna be lazy here and I'm gonna copy and paste this. This one is going to be a little bit different because we're gonna be asking a question. So the question here is going to be a post. 
And normally when you're taking in data, you want to do a post. In this case, we're getting data, we're getting the JSON. This one we're posting to ChatGPT, so we're going to be creating a post. And we're also gonna be passing information in the body of, of this post, so just make sure that you do that. Then this one is gonna be a different method, so it's gonna call it question. I'm also going to be getting the arc. So to get the arcs from the request, we can just say request, and then you can say arcs. Then I'm also going to be getting some data from, from this. So I'll just say request the JSON. So we're basically just getting an object from the request JSON file that we received from, from Unity or from anybody that is calling into the service. And then I'm just gonna say, you know what? I want I have a prompt object now. Can you give me the property that you know that is named question? Basically give me the value of that property. So that's what we're doing here. And then what I need to do is just for sanity checks, let's just go ahead and make sure that we're getting some, inf some information that we're gonna need basically for debugging purposes. So I'm just gonna say, make sure that if we are in debug and we can just say comma, default, it's going to be equal to false. And then I'll just show you, I'll just explain this in just a minute so you guys see know what this is doing. So what I'm doing in here is from Unity, I want to be able to pass in a debug flag and if I have the debug flag, I want to display in here the code that I'm getting from ChatGPT. This is really cool because we wanna see what we're getting from ChatGPT, right? So just make sure that you do that. And then what we can do here is we can say, you know what, ChatGPT, can you give us question receive? Basically, this is saying, you know, I did receive your question, so we're gonna be we're gonna be processing that. And then in here, I also want to I also want to display the question that I am getting from from Unity or from the caller. So we can just say, you know what, show me the question that you are sending me. And then I'm just gonna say format. And in this case, I'm just going to be displaying the question. So, so far we're not really, you know, displaying the information that we're getting from ChatGPT. We're just displaying the information that we're getting into this service. So I can just copy and paste this. And then what I'll do here is I'm just gonna say response ChatGPT. In this case, we're gonna be asking the, the component here, the ChatGPT wrapper, can you ask the question that you know the caller is, is asking so we can just pass it in. So this is actually what's gonna do most of the work. And then we can just copy and paste this one more time. And in this case, I want to say, you know, response was received. And then technically we could just copy and paste that. And then we can just display the response here. We don't need to do all that. And I'm just gonna do display response. And then lastly, we're just going to be returning the response back into the caller. So the next thing that I wanna do though is in this file, I have this HTTP call example. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put this in a new tab. In fact, we can just put it right here. So we have our service in here. And in fact, we can just probably just make this a little smaller so we can see the whole thing. We don't need a breakpoint in there. So I'll just make this smaller. So service here, couple of calls in here. And the thing that I'm gonna have you do though, it's go ahead and download this extension. And you're gonna search for REST client and make sure that you download this REST client. We can use Postman or we can use curl. I like to do use this, it was actually pretty cool because you can set up a post like this. This is the IP address, the endpoint, the HTTP version, also the content that we're gonna be sending and then the object that we're gonna be sending. So. I have an example here for a post. I also have an example, another example for a post with a different question. And then lastly, I'm just calling into the status endpoint. So we make some changes in our code here. So we need to go ahead and kill this from running and then just basically do Python, chatgpt underscore service. And I wanna make sure that there's no errors. So there's no errors that it's showing. I can select this and then do control shift P. And then we can just send, I think we can just send race client send request or you can just do control all r and basically to send it we did get it, the status okay so so that's good or api is you know it's getting called you can also see we got a 200 right here so let's ask a question here this one says create a c sharp script which displays hello world so i'm going to go ahead and select all these and i'm going to do control shift p and i'm just going to click on this and http request and when this is running you're going to see that it says waiting in here and that means that it is actually doing the call, it hasn't gotten a response just yet. So right now it's in this line and it's saying, okay, you know what? I want to ask the question 
and we're just basically waiting for the wrapper to get a response back. All right, guys, so it looks like this completed. It took a little bit of time, but we got the answer. You can see that the response here includes the explanation. It says, here's a basic c -sharp script that displays the text, hello world. And we also get our coding here in Markdown, which includes the actual hello world. And this is funny because this looks like a command, actual, a, a console application instead of a Unity application, but it gives you, you know, the information that you that you requested. Let's say that we wanted to make it look more like a Unity script. So you can say create a Unity, you can say create a Unity C Sharp script, which displays hello world, and then just select send request. And you can see now we're getting waiting, so we can wait for that new answer. Okay, so it looks like that completed, and this looks a lot better, right? Now we can see Unity Engine, we can see this is inheriting from Mono Behavior, and we also see a star and debug that low hello world, which is which is great. And this also tells you here what you need to do to make it work. It says to attach this to a game object. So 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 far so good. So let's try a different call. This one says create a C sharp script which creates a cube and do not include any explanation. So we can say create a Unity C sharp script that creates a cube, something like that. And we can add more complicated stuff if we wanted to. So I'm gonna do that and then just send that other request. And looks like this is completed as well. We can see, you know, this was successful call, C Sharp, Unity Engine, and we don't have any explanations, which is really cool because sometimes, well, in the future, we wouldn't wanna see explanations because we're gonna get the data in Unity and execute it. So you can see Unity Engine, this create cube inherits from Mono Behavior. We have our star method, which is very common. And we're also creating a, a cube and creating a primitive which also uses primitive DAQ, which is, you know, which works great. Obviously, if you wanted to do something more complicated, you can. So we can try something more complicated in here. We can say create a Unity snake game and provide all the scripts required to do so. Something like that. It doesn't need to be exact. We can see what we get back. We're just gonna do and send the request. All right, so we got our answer here. So creating a snake game in Unity will require several scripts to handle different aspects of the game, such as snake movement, spawning food, detection of collision. So it has everything in here that you would need to do that. Looks like it doesn't have the scripts necessary to do that, but it tells you what you would need to do to basically implement something like that. But we know that this is working. So let's say that you wanted to display the actual questions that, are getting, that is getting asked. So just make sure you include the bug equal true. And this is gonna be really powerful when we're starting to use this for something like in Unity. That way we can see the questions that are getting sent to the service. So we can just call this one and then we can actually click in here to send the request. And we got a 400, let me try that again. And it's gonna go ahead and send it. And now you can see the question received is display, which is basically this line right here. We can see ChatGPT question received. I can also see the questions that are getting asked, but you can see now we're getting the answer as well because the bug is set to true. And you can see here, the response was received and we got the script that we, you know, that we requested and we can also see the explanation of how to use that script in Unity. So that's honestly everything that I wanted to show you guys today. I'm going to be doing the, the actual ChatGPT service client for Unity on the next video where we're gonna be able to basically display this information in Unity and then we'll keep working on more cool videos and, and hopefully get to the final version of this prototype, which is what you guys probably saw on Twitter or you saw on the initial video that I did on ChatGPT. So really excited about this video series. If you wanna learn anything more about what I'm doing with ChatGPT, let me know in the comments. And also, if you're enjoying these videos, also let me know, I really wanna hear from you. Thank you very much, guys.